Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. Today's part 18 of my fitness database series. If you haven't watched parts one through 17, go watch those first. And as a reminder, if you don't care about fitness, that's fine because these tricks work in every database you could possibly build. So let's get back to it. All right, in the last class, we merged our meal list so it's in one form. And I wanna make this guy behave more like this guy, the food list, which we can browse the items down here if we want to, right? And over here we can't because we're filtering. So instead of filtering, let's use a record set like we did back in fitness level 10. And when this guy is clicked on, we'll seek for that item inside the record set and then set the bookmark. Okay, all right, some more advanced stuff here. Okay, so we need to go back to the on current event for this guy. And, and I do this a lot. Sometimes this happens. Sometimes the first time through, I just like to make it work. Okay, now it's working. Now how can we make it work better? All right, filtering is okay, but I want it to work like the other one so the user can still use the navigation button to go back and forth, right? How do we do that? All right, back into the on current event. Let's get rid of this guy. This is gonna be a little more complicated now. All right, so we need a record set, dim RS as a record set. And I don't have a video specifically on record set clones yet, but I have covered them in a lot of other videos. I gotta add it to my tech help list to do a record set clone only video. Okay, so we got the record set to find. We're gonna set the record set equal to the parent's record set clone. Parent dot record set clone. What is that? Well, the record set is the list of records that are in that form. And it's record set clone is something we can use to manipulate and change things and move through things without actually changing the records themselves. So we can do rs.find first, same criteria where the meal ID equals meal ID. So that's going to take the record set clone, which is a behind the scenes hidden record set pointing to the same set of records in that form. And we're just going to find the first record that matches our meal ID. It's not going to actually change anything yet. Okay. Now it shouldn't happen because we are literally clicking on a meal ID, but just in case if RS dot no match, if something happens where it can't match it, then we're just going to yell at the user status record not found and we'll make it red. Right. But that should never happen. Otherwise, we're gonna say parent dot bookmark equals rs dot bookmark and if, all right? And I mostly do this because I hate writing the reverse negative here, if not rs no match, all right, the double negative. And it doesn't make sense when you read it. So this makes more sense. I like writing clean code. I don't like writing fancy code. This is easier to write, it's easier to read, even though this should never happen, okay? Unless someone, unless you've got another form open and then the user deletes that record before this form is refreshed. Uh, yeah, is it possible? It's possible, especially if you're in a multi-user database. So we're basically saying set the parent's bookmark, which is the parent is the parent form, right? That meal F, set it equal to RS bookmark. In other words, the record that I found up here. Okay, now, we're basically done. RS.close, set RS equals nothing, right? If you set it, you gotta forget it. And save it, close it, close it, open it, and look at that. There we go. Beautiful. Okay. Now I have the focus jumping down here. So if you want to keep the focus up here, that's fine. Since this isn't editable, I kind of like that jumping down here because if they click here and want to change it, they can't, but the right down here, they can make type in changes. Okay, now that brings us to our other problem we had last time, we got an error. If we try to go to a new one, invalid use of null, debug, why is that? Well, it's trying to set the description cell start equal to the length of description, but length is already zero. So you can fix this with either checking to see if it's null or you can just say NZ description and that'll convert it to a zero. So when I go to a new record now, I don't get the problem anymore. Okay. 
But again, if you like writing clean code, just put if not is null description, then do that. But this will work fine too. Yeah, I guess sometimes I like sneaking tricks in. That's okay. <laughs> now this description after update, we can get rid of this. But we're probably going to want to requery this guy when a record is added down here. So what is the name of this guy again up here? This is meal list F. So let's come in here and say, well, me dot dirty equals false. So that saves the record in the, in the meal form. And then we're going to say meal list F dot requery. Save it like that. We might need to go to the record. Let's see. So if I come down here, if I just type in an, like an exclamation point, hit tab, all right, it updated that up there. And now that I'm thinking about it, the tab order, I don't want it jumping to the next record. We'll get to that in a minute too. Yeah, see the tab orders, well, we'll work on the tab order in a minute. But if I add something new and I type in here X, Y, Z, let's say, okay, it's up here, but we're gonna wanna seek and find that too. So at least our focus is sitting on that guy. Let's first set that cycle because I don't like when you tab, 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 and it, it cycles to a different record. So I'm going to come in here real quick and go to this guy and let's cycle just stay on the current record. If you're going to leave the record, I don't want to tab to the next record. So for down here, yeah, it'll tab through these items and it'll stick right there. This one won't tab forward or backward to a different record. I don't like that. And while we're at it, let's make sure this guy does the same thing. So if we're down here, brrr, okay, it stays there. Good, good, good. And this should just stay up in here. I want the forms to kind of try to behave at least somewhat similar to each other. All right, so that requery when we added this guy, let me delete this guy here. Let's try this again. All right, let me add a new one. And instead of a, a full requery, let's try a record set requery. Now we can't go record set dot requery here if you debug compile you should get an error yep see so what the trick is here always remember it's you got to go dot form dot record set requery okay that should work and again i got whole different videos on record set requery i think i pointed you to them in a previous video but now let's see if i type in xyz okay it shows up there without a full requery all right and that's important You'll see why in a second. What we need to do next though, this list is gonna get big and long, okay? So what I wanna do is when this is edited or updated, I wanna find and sit on that record up there using the same record set clone technique we just did a minute ago. So it's very similar, all right? Seek to the record or whatever you wanna call it. Same thing, it's just a little bit different. Dim RS has a record set set rs equals we want the record set of that meal list form so it's meal list f dot form dot record set clone there it is okay so now i got a record set clone pointing to that list up top which at this point should be in there because we requeried it Okay, remember this query is an aggregate query. It had to refresh itself, basically. Now, I hate using refresh because refresh is an actual access term. But, okay, so now we've got that. Now we got to do the same thing. RS find first, where meal ID equals the meal ID we're on, this guy. All right, so find the record up here that we're on down here. If no match. No math, no match, then status record not found. Okay, else, now we gotta move the bookmark to the record we just found. Meal list f dot form dot bookmark equals rs dot bookmark. So basically move the cursor, move the, the selected record to the bookmark we just found in the record set clone. And if rs.close, set it and forget it, rs equals nothing. Okay. I know that's like one, two, three, what, 10 lines of code, but it, it will make your database much better. Okay, so now if I'm up here, 
All right, if I come down here, well, this, if I do something like this, hit tab, look at, it stays on that record up there. If I add a new item, right? If I add, um, let's say, uh, da, 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 uh, coffee Joe's tab, look at that. Oh, it's slightly off, it's slightly off. It's up here instead of down here. We gotta fix that. And I'm actually glad that that came up because that brings to memory, Sometimes you can't get away with the record set requery like that because when you add records, it changes the structure that changes what's what's in that record set. So we actually have to take a slightly different approach. I'm glad this came up. I haven't I haven't had to deal with this problem in a long time. Okay, but it's it's bringing back all kinds of memories, folks. All kinds of memories of late nights and hair pulled out. All right, we have to we have to tackle this a slightly different way. Okay, we actually are gonna me.dirty equals false. Then we have to remember what meal ID we're on. Then properly requery the list, then seek to it. It's a, it's a slight modification because this doesn't know that we've added and, and changed record. Changing records is fine. It doesn't know that we've added a record to that record set, okay? So what we're going to do is up here, we're just going to dim a temp ID as a long. Okay. Me.dirty equals false saves the record in the table. Now we're going to say temp ID equals meal ID, whatever meal ID we're currently on. Okay. Now give it a proper requery. It's funny. That's what we started with. Okay. It's going to requery the list. Okay. So now that new item will show up in there properly. And all we gotta do is down here, we're gonna say temp ID. In other words, go to that one that we saved up top here. Okay, save it, debug compile. Let's see if memory serves. I haven't, I haven't run through this yet, so I'm, I'm going by, based on old, old memories. Let's delete, <laughs> probably should have run through this first, right? Let's delete this one. And let's delete Joe's coffee. And yeah, we're gonna make our own delete buttons to handle this stuff too, because I don't like that. Now we have to hit F5 to refresh the whole thing. Okay. Now let's add. Oh, we don't we don't wrong wrong add. Let's add uh Z Z Z Z Z Z Z. Now that's fine because it's at the end. Okay, let's add another one, Joe's coffee, and boom, we're right on it. See? Because we have to requery the list so it's it's up to date, then we can go to it. Okay, let's try adding something else. Let's add. Um, I'm just gonna try to sneak something in between cereal and coffee. Let's add C F F F F. Boom, and it puts it right in there, right spot. Beautiful. Okay, that was a tricky one, but just goes to show sometimes you gotta like save your variable, then we can requery the list, then we can go in here and blah blah blah. Um, you might be able to do it without that temp variable. I'm kind of tempted now because we're requerying this subform up here. It might, let's try, I'm just curious. I want to try it. Let's try to get away without doing this. And let's just put meal ID back down here. I just want to see if it works. It might work without the variable. Oh, someone's beaming in. All right, let's try it again. Let's try putting in C, Z, 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 Z. Nope, nope, see? Because, 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 because when we do the requery, this guy's got an event in it, right? We have an event in here. So this thing requeries, it puts the record back at the top and then that changes what's here. That's why we need that, that temp ID. Okay, so it all, it all came back to me now. <laughs> So we do need this, right? You see why? Save the record. Remember the ID because as soon as we do this, this thing requeries. But when this requeries, this goes back to the first record and we have an event in here in the on current event that brings this to whatever that was. So once that happens, then we need to immediately go back to the original. That's why, that's why we have to use a variable, okay? And we're gonna, we have to worry about deleting stuff, which we'll do in the next class. We got, uh, 
Joe's coffee can get deleted and ZZZ can get deleted. And of course, when we use our own delete button, we will then requery that. And everything is coming along nicely. Lots of little stuff. <laughs> so did you learn something? Is this fun? You guys enjoying this? Give me a comment down below. But that's gonna do it for part 18. Hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. See you tomorrow for part 19. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button right now and give me a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is completely free. And make sure you click that bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. Do you need help with your Microsoft Access project? Whether you need a tutor, a consultant, or a developer to build something for you, check out my Access Developer Network. It's a directory I put together personally of access experts who can help with your project. Visit my website to learn more. Any links or other resources that I mentioned in the video can be found in the description text below the video. Just click on that show more link right there. YouTube's pretty good about hiding that, but it's there. Just look for it. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access including building forms, queries, reports, tables, all that stuff. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? And if you like level one, level two is just $1. That's it. And it's free for members of my YouTube channel at any level. Speaking of memberships, if you're interested in joining my channel, you get all kinds of awesome perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. They also get one free beginner class each month, and yes, those are from my full courses. Gold members get the previous perks, plus access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos. Plus, you get access to my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions and all kinds of source code that I use. And gold members get one free expert class every month after completing the beginner series. Platinum members get all of the previous perks, plus they get all of my beginner courses, all of them from every subject, and you get one free advanced or developer class every month after finishing the expert series. And you can become a diamond sponsor and have your name listed on the sponsor page on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.